What's up everyone, Ben with the BTC Sessions here, and this is your Daily Session. HODL that Bitcoin. Before we dive into the news today, just a couple quick things. Number one, do check out my website, btcsessions.ca. This is where you can reach out to me directly and book your own BTC session. So we can chat Bitcoin, wallets, perfect security, whatever you like. All you need to do is scroll down to the bottom and there is a contact form for you there. Secondly, big shout out to my sponsors today, uh, leaden.io. Proud to have them as a sponsor of the show. This is where you can use your Bitcoin as collateral to secure a Canadian dollar loan and now a US dollar loan in select international markets. So what does this mean? Well, basically on the website, there's a slider here. You can select a dollar amount you'd like to obtain and it will tell you how much of a Bitcoin deposit is required to secure that amount. Uh, the sign-up process is a a few minutes and if you're approved then you get your dollars in your bank account within usually around 24 hours i did it myself a couple weeks ago worked like a charm so if you are looking to get your hands on dollars but would not like to sell your bitcoin to do so well this could be an option for you so do check them out and uh these guys are actually the reason why i'm sounding hopefully a little bit less crappy today because i've got this fancy new uh little arm for my microphone so it can be close to my face and you can hopefully hear me better. So again, thank you to the guys at Ledin.io for being a show sponsor. But without further ado, let's dive into the news. So a cool application here. Now it's not yet available where I am in Canada, but for you Americans out there, uh, this could be something worth taking a look at. So this is a Chrome plugin um, and it's called Moon. And so what does Moon do? It allows you to pay for stuff on Amazon using Bitcoin and Lightning Network, actually. So the way it, does, it works is it's going to be a plugin for your browser. And here's an example here, what it would look like. And essentially, when you go to pay for something, you'd have this little pop down menu that asks you if you'd like to pay with Bitcoin. And you can choose either uh, just direct with Bitcoin or you can get a Lightning Network invoice. Now, to clarify, this does not mean that Amazon is accepting Bitcoin, it just means that these guys at Moon are providing a third party service in which your order gets paid in the native currency, uh, US dollars in this case, but you get to spend your Bitcoin if you choose. So you're sending your Bitcoin to Moon and they are paying your Amazon invoice for you. I think we're going to see a lot more services like this where there are these third party plugins where people can spend the currency that they choose to spend. And I very much view these as kind of like a gap bridging technology that will serve its purpose in the short term before merchants by and large realize that enough people are actively spending Bitcoin that they could just accept it directly and pay most of their invoices with it, whether it be their back end expenses. And you'll see this kind of swap over where all of a sudden, even these guys like Moon may be disintermediated in the long term because, I mean, the goal in the end is to get people using Bitcoin over time. But I think it will take a while, especially with the volatile nature of Bitcoin, until that market cap po kind of pops up to a point where it's not as volatile and people are more willing to spend it versus hold it for long periods of time as it becomes a monetary asset than... Uh, then yeah, I guess these guys are, are doing great things. So um, I will be curious to try it out if and when it becomes available for Canadians because I don't want to pay those cross-border fees to get something from Amazon.com when I could use Amazon.ca for way cheaper. But hey, good job, guys. Uh, let's move on. Now, this article I found very interesting. So Vitalik Buterin, uh, the head of Ethereum, uh, the creator of Ethereum, uh, he proposed higher staking rewards for upcoming uh, for the upcoming Ethereum proof of stake algorithm. So they are switching to proof of stake instead of proof of work. So instead of mining Bitcoin, essentially what you would be doing is you have X number of Ethereum and you stake it and you earn money from the Ethereum that you already have. And that's how new Ethereum are created. Now, this in and of itself means that in theory, it, it kind of seems like the rich get richer, right? Because 
you have X amount of Ethereum, you stake it. If you have more, then you earn more. Obviously, just like having money in a bank account or as an investment, the more you invest, the more potential upside you have. Um, now, the interesting part of this isn't necessarily the proof of stake, uh, but rather that Vitalik is saying, hey, let's do this, and more or less, they're probably just going to do it. Um, I likened this to a central plant, so this is what I put here. Uh, so, uh, actually, we will go here. Uh, I liken this to to like a central planner saying, hey, uh, we are going to up inflation because that's what it is. Unless you're staking your coins and you're getting that reward, if you're just holding Ethereum, you are being diluted by the new supply of Ethereum onto the market. The same is true with Bitcoin currently until that block reward starts to get negligible. If you're holding Bitcoin right now, you're experiencing inflation. And that happens every 10 minutes. New coins are mined onto the market and that dilutes loots how much Bitcoin you have. The difference is with Ethereum, there is no set monetary policy. And in this case, you have the head, the creator of Ethereum proposing monetary policy that people will then implement. Well, again, that seems eerily similar to central banking because that's essentially what it is. Um, and Vitalik is still the, the center point, uh, the focal point of Ethereum, and more or less what he says is probably going to go. So this is the kind of stuff that deters me from things like Ethereum is you have centralized entities deciding monetary policy, and it's still incredibly unclear, right? This could be changed at any time. Maybe uh, this, this amount of inflation isn't working out, and they need to incentivize miners more, and so they up inflation even more through staking. Um, so yeah, uh, we're just going to move on. And, and my segue here is, speaking of central planners, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, a group of 189 different countries coming together to more or less try and set monetary policy and drive growth and jobs and so on and so forth. Anyways, uh, they this tweet and an article that they put out, how central banks can set up a system that would make deeply negative interest rates a feasible option. Now, what would deeply negative interest rates do. We'll get into that in a second, but I liken to this, them basically saying, you should never save. We're just going to turn on the printing presses and rack up debt forever. And again, this this right here is a perfect example of why Bitcoin needs to exist. People need this alternative to escape crap like this. Because this is saying that we're going to penalize savers and we're going to encourage you to get debt. We are going to encourage you to take out debt. And it just seems like a race to the bottom. So um, this article from Bitcoinist dives a little bit deeper into it. But uh, let's look at this quote here. So the interest rate cut would transmit to bank deposits, loans, and bonds. Without cash, which by the way, everybody's pushing for a cashless society, so without cash, you have no out, except for now Bitcoin. But anyways, without cash, depositors would have to pay the negative interest rate to keep their money with the bank. So if you had money in a bank account, essentially, they just take money out of it every month. They steal your money just for having it in a bank. And if there's no cash alternative, if you can't just hold cash, there's no out. There is zero out other than non-central bank issued currencies that you can hold in your own wallet where you decide the consensus rules of the network. This is why this is important. Anyways, uh, negative interest rate to keep their money with the bank, making consumption and investment more attractive. This would jolt lending, boost demand, and stimulate the economy. So what they want to do is disincentivize you from saving at all. Why save money? We want you to spend it. We want you to go out and be a good little consumer and buy all the crap off of the store shelves and we'll keep making more stuff for the store shelves. Or maybe we want you to sock your money into the already 
heavily inflated stock market. And then if shit hits the fan, we'll just bail out the banks, people will get more debt and pile that into their bank account, and we'll force them to reinvest it and buy more shit with it until it all becomes crumbling down. And thank God for Bitcoin. Anyways, rant over. This is probably why Bitcoin is looking pretty attractive right now, though. So the uh, the price of Bitcoin has been uh, kind of revisiting the tops that we were visiting, uh, I believe, last week. Uh, so at the time of doing this video, I believe it's around 5,400, 5, kind of mid 5,400s at the moment. Um, the four hour chart uh, says that it could be eyeing the 6K range. Again, I'm not going to be super surprised if we see pullbacks and it kind of bounces back and forth for another few months before uh, going above the levels that we are right now. I'm not anticipating major things happening, but hey, I'd be happy to be wrong. Um, I also wouldn't be surprised to see us vis revisiting kind of like the four, four to $5,000 range in the near future, but um, I would also be pleasantly surprised to see 6K and more. Uh, but this is very much mirroring what happened in, in 2015, a little bit more volatile then. Um, but yeah, so we are... I'm very much thinking that we've already seen that bottom back in December around $3,100. Um, it's, it, it seems like history doesn't repeat, but it rhymes. And I, I've, talked about this plenty on the show before, but I very much believe that we are just seeing more or less a rehash of the entire four-year cycle that we saw last time. And I think it's only a matter of time before we see uh, another mania in a couple years' time, probably a year after the halving. But hey, I could be totally wrong. I, I could be total BS. So hey, I guess we'll see. Anyways, uh, let's move on. I'm not going to dive into all of the TA here. I don't think we need. But anyways, they're saying potentially 6K in, in the short term here. Um, now, just another thing in relation to the price. Bitcoin is already outperforming the NASDAQ, S&P 500, and gold in 2019. So Bitcoin is currently up around 40% since the beginning of the year. So pretty damn good returns. When people like to crap on Bitcoin and say, oh, look how much it's lost, they, take, they, they choose and cherry pick their dates very carefully because there's only a very small amount of time that you can look to and say, ha, see, you lost money. But realistically, it's, it's, you know, you're taking that peak right in and around the mania that happened in, say, November, December of 2017. And then stuff started to turn around and we got that big bear market kind of through 2018 that kind of was the worst of the worst around December 2018. Um, and I think that's turning around. So do I think that we're going to be revisiting uh, those lows and lower lows? I don't think so. I think we're pretty much done with that. But I do think it will be a tad boring for the next few months, uh, it, especially in comparison to what we saw in 2017. I don't think we're going to see any moon moons or rocket ships uh, for a little while. So Anyways, one last fun little thing I wanted to touch on. You can now bet Bitcoin on Game of Thrones Season 8. So <laughs> there's a website that's allowing you to bet your Bitcoin on who's going to uh, basically win the Iron Throne and rule Westeros at the end of Game of Thrones Season 8. So who do they have here? They've got a few different people that you can bet on. One of them, obviously, Jon Snow, but a few others. Um, and then if it ends up not being any of them, there's an unknown option that you can bet on and if it ends up being two people sharing the throne then the winnings will be split between multiple people so i just thought this was funny uh, of course there's going to be betting on game of thrones because why wouldn't there it's the internet uh but i'm gonna leave it there guys uh thank you so much for joining me today hopefully you're liking the sound now that the microphone is much closer. Uh, please do hit up my website, hit up the sponsor, Ledin.io. I forgot to mention they've got a deal where if you check out Ledin and you end up getting a loan, they'll credit you with an additional $50 worth of Bitcoin to your account. So check that link down below to get that deal. Um, 
Again, hit subscribe, hit like, smash that bell icon if you want to get notified. I don't, I'm always chatting everybody up in the sidebar when this uh, airs for the first time. And finally, if you really liked what you saw, you can always drop me a Lightning Network tip via tippin.me. If you don't know how to do that, I did a tutorial and I will link that in the cards right here. But beyond that, thank you guys very much once again, and I will see you guys tomorrow for your daily session.